I have a cousin who um, I was probably, the last time I saw him, I had to be about seven, I believe. He went away for 35 years for, um, for charges. And I remember our family um, kind of moving on as like business as usual. It was like, well, okay, he's, he's gone and um, there's nothing anybody can do about it. And it, it's almost like our family forgot about him. Um, and I remember it was, that was my, my first encounter um, as a child with anybody that I had known uh, going to prison. Our family um, is from Missouri. Um, some people say misery, <laughs> but Missouri. Anytime we would go to St. Louis to visit, I remember thinking like, wow, like nobody's talking about him. Nobody's mentioning his name. Nobody is, nobody is, um, you know, sad that he isn't here. So when I had asked Natasha if I could attend a prison visit, the reason that I wanted to go um, was because hearing Mr. Guzman's story, knowing that this was his very first conviction, uh, and in a split second, he just made a horrible, a horrible um, mistake. And the goal with Redeemed is that um, it doesn't change the fact that Mr. Guzman did what he did. Uh, he's not denying that he murdered his best friend. He has to live with that every single day for the rest of his life. Um, but the goal is that there is still redemption for um, anyone who has made a mistake. And so for me, I wanted to go because I, I wanted to meet someone, I wanted to meet the man that he is today, um, not the man that he was um, at the age of 17. And I'm going in the name of my, my cousin and um, in some way, hopefully I'll see a little bit of that light uh, in my cousin and, and Mr. Guzman. The Vietnam War started when I was like 14 or 15. And as I got older, got closer to draft age, got into draft age, was in college, so I got a student deferment for a couple of years. And I, I could see a connection between what I felt was the injustices of the war in Vietnam. I thought, you know, the kids, and they were kids, literally my age, who were going and getting their lives destroyed in Vietnam. And, and also the, uh, kind of power of the fist of American military coming down on the Vietnamese people and what they suffered through. And, you know, I just, being put in that situation where I had to make a decision, do I want to go on this war? Do I want to be part of this force? I, made me start thinking, well, what force should I be part of? That opened my eyes to a whole lot of other things and looking at other injustices and looking at and the situations of people in prison in particular, you know, for this discussion about Redeemed. To help people, she gets writers together um, and attorneys to look at people's cases who are incarcerated um, in jail, to look at their cases and um, to help them write letters to like the governor, to possibly get like a lower sentence where they can get released sooner or um, or just get out of jail, right? And so, um, so the nonprofit has a client um, that they're that we're working with. So Redeem's commitment to giving people a second chance really resonated with me because I often see uh, during my day job as a public defender limited opportunities for us to use certain avenues in the legal system to help people. And there's a gap in the legal system, especially with regard to clemency applications. There's just not a lot of people out there that are working up these clemency cases for people. And I remember having a conversation with Natasha about how we could try to fill that gap a little bit. And she had this great idea about using Redeemed as a launching pad for a clemency project. 
to give people who needed a second chance an opportunity to file a clemency application with the governor so that the governor could take a look at how they've changed, how they've worked on themselves, how they've become a better person, and hopefully the governor would take mercy on them and give them the second chance that the legal system hasn't been able to. Everybody has the potential, and I think that you know, it would be necessary for us to uh, look for ways to make that potential come true for people. I, when I saw what Rodin was trying to do, how it was trying to uh, better the lives of people who had found themselves in these situations, that I just said, you know, this is something I can contribute to and I can contribute to as a writer. And I can help bring together my specific talents and, and skills to help people move forward and beyond this situation. And that really appealed to me a lot. History is so important and redeemed also has a history in the same way. I have my mother here who I love, mm -hmm. like all of it. You know, it comes back to her and even before her, her mother and her mother before that. Um, I remember when my mom, when I was, I don't know, about eight years old, my mom one day got up and said, I'm gonna go get grandma from Alabama. Grandma was 92 years old at that point. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean you're gonna go get grandma? I'm getting on a plane, I'm bringing grandma back. And grandma at 92 was still had her, was still feeding chickens, was still cooking for herself, was still doing things, but apparently there was a fire or a small fire and people were worried. And even though there were other brothers and sisters, it was my mom in California in LA who flew back to Alabama and then grandma arrived. And I remember grandma was this six foot woman she, to me, she was quite tall. What was she about? She was at least 5'11". She was tall. And I remember her walking in in her long dress and her patent leather shoes <laughs> because she was clean. Um, and I remember thinking that she was a goddess. She was beautiful and tall and kind. And she had the warmest smile, just a beautiful woman. Because I saw my mom give everything, not just to me, to her mother, but to the children in the neighborhood, to her husband, to just random strangers. She was somebody who gave it all. So I want to be that person. I want to take care of myself because that's important. That's the piece that I'm bringing to this generation. But I want to be able to give it all withholding nothing. Go straight to, to the restaurant. Is that okay? Okay, good. Okay. My daughter's like, I want pop Let's get some. <laughs> I'm like, well, okay, okay. This morning, I was like, like I guess a little nervous. I was a little surprised that I was nervous. Part part of me feels like, in some weird way, that like a portion of like his where he stands is like in our hands, if that makes sense, and like. Not that I'm putting, you know, this, you know, making this about us in that regard, but I think just like wanting to do the right thing, you know, and right by him. And um, yeah, so I, I was, I was a little nervous by that because um, it's a big deal, you know, it's like this could go great, meaning his outcome could go great or um or unfavorable. How I'm gonna feel if this doesn't like work out favorably. You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah, I just, I don't know how I would feel about that. Mm. Um, yeah, so I think um, I'm excited to meet him, but at the same time, I think there's like a little bit of hesitation because like, I get to leave and go home. When just listening to you say that, I never think anymore about whether or not I would fail. Like mm -hmm. there's always a chance to fail. Mm -hmm. Like every risk 
or almost every day I'm thinking I could fail at this mm-hmm. so it's not like you know it's not like the clincher yeah. it's like I could fail at it mm-hmm. but I can try again you mm-hmm. know or mm-hmm. but I hadn't really thought about that as something that I've adopted because every time you go into a courtroom you could lose right. it's like 50-50 right. it's like not the best odds mm-hmm. at any time especially when you're working with people who have done terrible things right. or done made a mistake right. or have been at the wrong place at the wrong time like you're probably gonna lose and I think that's that becomes part of your character like anytime you have an opportunity to help somebody take back their life is I mean it's a great opportunity it's a privilege it's one of the reasons why I do the job that I do because it actually gives me the ability to give people or help people get a second chance so when opportunities like this present themselves, I'm really grateful because Vicente's done a lot of hard work on himself and now we're going to have an opportunity to, to show Governor Newsom that this is someone who deserves a second chance in life. Does anybody else have FaceTime? <laughs> Let's see, Tom, so how I do my FaceTime? Oh, there it is. Okay. Hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Great to see you too. Good to see you all. <laughs> We did, but we miss you being here. Yeah, yeah, no, I wish I could be there. Ooh, and you know, we're excited. I know that there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, but it's been great so far. So, good work. This is good work. Yeah. Okay, you're obligatory. Hello. <laughs> you have to say more, Michael. <laughs> hey, nice to finally Michael, meet you in person. You? Yeah, we, good we to see you. Time, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish you could be here with us. Okay, so this is what's going down now. So the value of all four of us, we all are going to be playing a different role in this. Let me start with Michael, because Michael is doing the technical stuff. You know, the things that can go wrong and also trying to find out, you know, how to... You know, what can we do? Is is there something that we can do? Not make it better, not to change it, but to really present a fair picture of what's happening. I'm coming in there just clarifying things that I've seen in the statements that he's already written um, and just bringing it together. And Karen is gonna be asking questions. It's really getting to the heart of who he is. So who he is as a person, um, his remorse, his change and really just she's the heartbeat of the whole story so as the lawyers we could go through you know checking things off dotting i's crossing t's but karen and you are the heartbeat and you're going to smooth over the final story that we come up with and together as a team we could present him in the in the best light possible for the state of california that's good i'm looking forward to that that's <laughs> Nobody is, um, you know, sad that he isn't here. And I wonder how many inmates feel that when they get a life sentence. I remember the very last time that I spent with my cousin on that trip. We were playing outside on the the front porch of my aunt's house and she lived in East St. Louis at that time and which is a pretty rough, rough neighborhood. I I felt like I was in a, a foreign land because in California we didn't have, I don't even have those little bugs that light up, like those little lightning bugs. And I remember my aunt giving us some um, jars and my cousin was like, here, you, you got to catch them. And him showing us how to catch the lightning bu- bugs in the little mason jars. And we were putting lids on them and sat them on the porch. And um, that was kind of like our little nightlight on the porch in this rough part of town. But I... I felt safe, um, oddly enough, which, you know, most people can't say that nowadays in, in East St. Louis, but I felt like if anything happens, he's, he's going to protect us. I felt so secure with him there. And, um, so not having him, um, 
after that was was painful because I I just I couldn't imagine not having the the safety of of my my big cousin I'm going in the name of my my cousin and um, in some way hopefully I'll see a little bit of that light uh, in my cousin and, and Mr. Guzman. My hope, especially with the Redeem team and you know bringing writers and attorneys together in the first place is that we all affect each other. Like Octavia Butler once said, you know everything you touch you change and everything you change changes you. One of the memories that I'll always have from this trip is sitting in that visiting room with Karen and Natasha. Karen's on my left-hand side. Vince is on the other side of the glass. They both got phones to their ears. And Vince is crying as he talks about how remorseful he is for committing the crime that he did. And Karen's crying too as she she hears this tragic story and there's just this deep human connection that they're making and it's it's incredible to me that these two people who Karen's a pastor she's been one for years and you know Vince has been in prison for the last 10 years that despite where their lives are today despite where they came from before they're still making this connection in that moment that's the power of this work to me. It's, it's bringing people together and connecting them in ways that they never would have been connected before. This kind of thing like changes you forever. I remember uh, Mike shared last night that he always tries to find the redemption um, in someone. And I think that if you could just take a little moment and have a little empathy and put yourself in, in that person's shoes for two seconds, I guarantee you'd get involved. I guarantee it. And becoming vulnerable is when you align with somewhat, somebody else who's vulnerable, you also become vulnerable. So it just reminds us of our, our humanity. And that's why I wanted to be in that moment with this group so that we could be vulnerable and safe and connected and community together. And together, also means the client that we went to see. Like he's part of our community as well. Like we're all blended together. It's not us and him, it's us. <laughs>